Eighth grade, welcome to another episode of Mr. Pistel's Science. As you can see, I am an apex predator and we're going to talk about natural selection. Um, there's a pretty cool simulation in Amplify Science for natural selection um, to build on the natural selection labs that we did in class. Um, the paper bird one, the dog breeding one, well that was artificial selection. Um, so what I'm going to do is log into Amplify. If anyone forgot their code, I can reset it for you. Just let me know. So I'm going to click on Natural Selection. There we go. Um, chapter 1, of course. I'm going to have you guys do this pre-assessment later. But, um, actually, I'm going to skip 1.2 as well. So I'm going to click on 1.3. And this lesson is on exploring variation and distribution in populations. Basically, we're going to see what the sim looks like. So um, you can skip the warm-up, too. The warm-up has to do with newts. But let's get, let's get to the simulation. So I have it open in another tab. Um, basically, this is a simulation with three types of organisms. Uh, we have the trees, which are called thorn palms. We have basically the prey, which are called australopes, and they eat the trees. And then we have the secondary consumers, which we call carnathons. So maybe I'm a carnathon today. Um, so we have the producers, the primary consumers, the secondary consumers. Um, we learned that stuff in sixth grade. And what you can do, what you can do is click on each type of organism and change the amount of variation. So right now I'm changing the amount of variation for the trees. So if I have no variation, all the trees are the same height. Um, as I increase variation, there's some, now there's some short trees, there's some really tall trees with a height of 10. Let's go to an animal though. The Australopes. I can change, I can change a lot of things actually. This is changing their fur, I can change their color, let's change their color. Okay. I can change all kinds of things. Later on, we're going to see how this affects the natural selection of these organisms. And for the carnivores, I can change their fur, how much fur they have. Oh, it's like kind of like a lion's mane. I can change their jaw strength. Oh, yeah, you can see. So if I have high variation, the some of the carnathons will have very big jaws. Some will have very small jaws. Um, it's actually not required to run, but if I want to run this, we're going to see some natural selection at work. So some of the carnivores will eat the australopes. Sometimes australopes will just naturally die because they don't have enough food or they'll die of old age. Um, but we're going to explore more on that later. I can click analyze on any time. So we'll do this stuff later about studying natural selection. But um, today I want you to play with increasing the variation of the thorn palms, increasing the variation of the australopes, and increasing, increasing the variation of the carnathons. Um, actually, Amplify has you try some missions where you set up these levels of variation, so you should try those. <clears throat> but that introduces the concept of histograms. I'll play this video. Biologists use graphs called histograms to show variation in populations of organisms. Let's look at a population of australopes to understand how histograms can show variation. If you look at the australopes, you can see that although they are all from the same population, they are all different from each other. 
They have different traits. For example, These are words the Australopes vary in color from yellow to green Variation. to blue, and they have different amounts of fur on their bodies. Their necks range from very short to very long. Variation. These are examples of variation in the Australopes population. This is if the population is broken into groups according to a single feature, such as the length of their neck, and they line up according to the trait of how long their necks are, we can see how many individuals have short necks and how many have medium, long, and very long necks. So this is what we call a histogram. The lines of organisms are like bars in a graph. You guys the probably know the that bar from in the math graph, class. The more organisms that have that neck length, this type of graph is called a histogram. This is the same histogram represented in a different way. Graph of it shows distribution. the same variation in neck length within the Australope population. If the Australopes are grouped by a different feature, the shape of the histogram will change. Now the Australopes are lining up according to color. You could count how many Australopes are each color by looking at every individual Australope one by one. But using the histogram is easier. One quick look shows that most of the Australopes in this population are blue, some are yellow, and a small amount are green. Histograms help biologists understand the variation of traits in a population. They are also useful for comparing two or more populations or for investigating how populations change over time. Um, so histograms are a good way to measure the changes in the population, which uh, we're going to use a lot for natural selection and evolution, actually. Um, so I'm, I can do a little demonstration with pennies. So get, get your pocket change that you might have laying around at home. And I can make a histogram based on my pocket change. So I could sort this pocket change by... Let's say the easiest thing to do is just to make a histogram based on type of coin. So let's see what I have the most of. Oh, whoops, I put a nickel there. So if I make a histogram based on type of coin, I have six pennies, two nickels, five dimes, seven quarters. So that's one histogram I could make that shows the variation in the type of coin. Um, I could also do the size of the coin, which is obviously going to be the same thing. Um, but let's say I want to make a histogram with no variation, then I'm going to have all pennies. So this histogram has no variation. It's all pennies. I'm going to introduce a little bit of variation by adding a nickel. I can introduce more variation by adding a quarter. Let's say I have a histogram with perfect variation because all different versions are equally represented. Um, so there's lots of types of variation. And actually, that was under building histograms, which you can answer this question. How can histograms help you describe a population? But going back to part three, um, actually you should know all of these words, except for maybe distribution. We know about variation from our paper birds and from our dogs. We know about generations from those labs too. So the, so the new word here is distribution, um, which we're gonna show with our histograms. And distribution is the number of individuals of, of each trait in a population. And remember, a population is basically the same species in one ecosystem, like a group of a species in an ecosystem. When you're done with all that, um, try the homework. So basically, your assignment is to play with the simulation, try those missions that they have, watch the histogram video in part two. This doesn't really have anything to fill out here, but you should read it. 
and try building a histogram with your pocket change and then do the homework. Um, I hope that's helpful. Stay safe. Take care.